Nichols and I'm Professor of Science and Democracy at Sprue down at the University of Sussex uh, and I'm an Associate Fellow at CSAP. Well I'm here um, to uh, mark the launch of the edited book that CSAP and others have put together uh, for this occasion to mark the transition from John Beddington to Sir Mark Wolpert as Government Chief Scientist uh, and to talk about some of the themes uh, in that book. The idea for the, the book emerged uh, from uh, a conversation between CSAP, the Government Office for Science, uh, SPRU, where I work, uh, Institute for Government and others. Uh, about a year ago, um, we decided to organise a series of events, seminars to look at different aspects of scientific advice uh, across Whitehall. Um, and then we invited uh, several of the speakers at that, those events uh, and also a few other experts to contribute chapters to what's now become this edited collection that we've published today. We pulled out uh, three or four headlines from uh, a very rich set of, of about 20 essays in the collection. Um, the first of those is the importance of uh, intermediaries. We talk about experts as intermediaries, recognising that uh, those intermediary networking translational skills are a form of expertise in their own right and need to be taken very seriously in the way uh, expert advice is thought about and uh, uh, institutionalised in Whitehall. Um, a second issue we look at is the broader ecosystem of expertise. Uh, it's very tempting to focus on chief scientists as uh, uh, what I called in the collection the sort of charismatic megafauna of, of the, the science advisory jungle. You know, they're very uh, eye-catching, uh, they attract a lot of the uh, attention. Um, but they're only one part of a much richer, bigger system, and we need to understand where they fit in relation to all of those other uh, less visible, less celebrated uh, parts. Um, the third thing we talk about is the shifting disciplinary mix in expert advice. Um, there's been a gradual shift now over a few years towards uh, greater emphasis and inclusion of uh, engineering alongside the natural sciences, now social sciences as well. Uh, and we ask the question as to how far and how fast that can go in terms of engaging more systematically with the breadth of expertise that could be taken from the social sciences uh, and uh, looking as well beyond into the humanities, uh, particularly subjects like history. Uh, we make an argument for the role of history in science policy. So that sort of question of how you balance and, and uh, weigh up uh, different forms of expertise from different uh, um, disciplinary contexts is, is, is very important. CSAP has uh, fantastic networks um, and they've managed very quickly really in three or four years to build up a real head of steam uh, in terms of direct connections between uh, the academic community obviously primarily in Cambridge but I'm an example of a non-Cambridge academic who's also involved uh, between those academics and then a very uh, broad cross-section now of uh, senior policymakers across Whitehall um, and that's a very valuable resource there aren't uh, many similar uh, organisations that provide access uh, and act uh, as, as brokers and intermediaries between those two different worlds. For those of us that work on, you know, that research how public policy works and, and in my case look at the relationship between science, scientific advice uh, and politics and policy, um, you clearly need to temper uh, and relate study of those questions in, in an academic context to the realities of making policy uh, on the ground in government departments uh, with all the countervailing pressures that uh, civil servants and ministers and others face. Um, so uh, events like this today, the conference, the seminars that led up to this uh, have tried and I think succeeded in bringing together uh, those worlds of, of theory and practice in quite a productive uh, and helpful way. There is a, a, an interest more generally across government in the role that evidence in a variety of forms plays in the policy process. Uh, we see this uh, for sure in the increased emphasis placed on the chief scientist network and other structures for scientific advice. Uh, we also see it in the cabinet office through the uh, network of what works centres, the nudge unit uh, that we heard Laura Haynes speaking from today. So there's a lot of, of activity around this uh, question of how you improve the evidence base for policy. Uh, and I think that makes uh, the kind of questions that we've tried to ask and hopefully answer through the collection and through this conference uh, very timely and very important.